my miscarriage happened in 2009. February of 2009, it was my third pregnancy. Lost my first baby early in pregnancy. Um, I was really excited about being pregnant and um, because I have endometriosis, I didn't know whether I'd be able to have babies. As it turns out, I was very good at getting pregnant <laughs> because I ended up having, uh, I've had seven pregnancies and one, one has survived. At nine weeks, we had a scan because I'd been bleeding and baby was there. And then at the 12 week scan, um, the radiographer said that there was no heartbeat. But because I'd had two children, I could see this doesn't look right. How come we can't see a heartbeat? It was classified as missed miscarriage, so I was supposed to be eight or nine weeks. But when I went for the second ultrasound, it turned out that the baby stopped growing at fifth week. Uh, and I had at least three weeks without any miscarriage symptoms. There are three different types of miscarriage that can happen. There are missed miscarriages, there are incomplete miscarriages, and there are complete miscarriages. So if we think about complete miscarriages first, which is, is probably what people are most familiar with, a complete miscarriage is if you, you know you've got a pregnancy and you then sadly experience some bleeding, some cramps, and you may notice that you've passed something like a clot or some tissue, and then the bleeding and the cramps stop. Now that's a miscarriage that is complete. An incomplete miscarriage is when you get bleeding and cramps um, and some of the tissue of the pregnancy will be passed, but not all of it. So for women who experience an incomplete miscarriage, the bleeding and the pain may not stop and you need to go and see a doctor and there are certain things that they can do that will help the miscarriage sort of finish. Unfortunately, with those ones, they have an increased risk of infection as well. And so we're very careful of, of those women that we, um, so they often come into hospital and we manage them in hospital. And then there's what's called a missed miscarriage. And that's where a woman may not have even known she was pregnant or, or may have known um, and thinks that the pregnancy is continuing. And then there's nothing in terms of bleeding or pain at all. And they will only realise that the miscarriage has happened and the pregnancy has what we call failed um, when they go to a doctor and get either a scan or a blood test that shows that they're no longer pregnant. I had absolutely no symptoms to tell me that I had miscarried. Um, and we found out at our 13 week scan, we were, the baby had passed away at nine weeks, three days. The stories that I did hear were all the opposites of what I went through. The excruciating pain, the people thinking that they're going into labour, or a lot of blood clots, and I had none of those. So in my head, I was still trying to convince myself, no, this can't be, because it's not the things that you know that I knew about miscarriages at the time. Then there's what used to be called a blighted ovum, where the placenta and the fluid develops, but the baby doesn't develop inside. Some women find blighted ovum is a um, negative term because they feel it's very much their baby, even though there wasn't a, an embryo developed. So we, we don't use that term as much as we used to. Our third miscarriage was after our son had been born. With that one, my body didn't deal with that miscarriage naturally, so that had to be medically managed in hospital, and that was probably made it seem more, um, more it was harder to deal with, yeah. When I got told, for me, yes, massive shock, but at the same time, it kind of explained what, what, why I wasn't having heaps yeah. of symptoms and um, for Simon it was probably more of a shock for you. It was because I just walked in there expecting to see yeah. the baby. But. And he, his face was just just shock like yeah so that was hard to see him go through it as well. Mm. Yeah. Molar pregnancy is a pregnancy where so you basically have strong pregnancy symptoms but the pregnancy is not continuing as a normal pregnancy. So basically the tissue of pregnancy continues to divide very rapidly 
And so the levels of the hormones of pregnancy, the levels continue to rise very, very quickly, abnormally. And so the woman has extreme symptoms of feeling very unwell. There's other early pregnancy losses as well. So probably most commonly people know about what's called an ectopic pregnancy, where the pregnancy develops but not in the womb, not in the right place. So sometimes it can be in the fallopian tubes or something like that. And obviously that's not where it's supposed to grow and, and so it does need to be often surgically removed. If a woman has had a miscarriage, the outlook for the next pregnancy is, is in fact far better than she normally would imagine, even after two miscarriages. Um, and reassurance can be provided with an early ultrasound and if there is a baby's heartbeat then there's an 80 to 90 percent chance that pregnancy will continue despite any earlier miscarriages. We had the first two miscarriages before our firstborn and then we had our first child and then I was thinking we're fixed, like we're sweet now. Mm. And then to miscarry after having the first one I felt like we were going backwards in terms of trying to have kids and the fact that we had found out that we were pregnant and the joy around that and then finding out that we had lost a child was really, yeah, it was really heartbreaking. 